partial failures. You're working on a project that coordinates between multiple services. Maybe it's a payment gateway, a reservation system, or maybe you've inherited thousands of microservices. In a world where nothing ever fails, this is simple, but we don't live in that world. My name is Christian, and I'm a polyglot software engineer with a fondness for Elixir. As is the case with most of my videos, code is available with a link in the description. Let's get started. If you're working with Elixir, you're in luck. The Ash project includes a package called Reactor that handles this kind of workflow orchestration, even if you're not using Ash. At its core, Reactor executes steps by resolving a dependency graph, running concurrently whenever possible. Instead of saying do A, then B, and also do C, we can say A exists, it's a thing, B relies on the result of A, and C also relies on the result of A. Reactor figures out that it has to do A first, and then it's free to do B and C. Reactor also implements sagas, which allow each action to have a compensating action, what it calls undo, whenever something downstream fails. It's like database transactions, but across multiple systems. If C fails, A has the opportunity to unwind if necessary. I'd encourage you to take a look at the tutorials and guides in the Reactor docs. This library has a lot of depth. But today, we're going to pretend to work for a travel agency. We'll need to look up and book flights, reserve a hotel room, and send a confirmation email. Simple enough. So here's a naive approach written in an Elixir live book. First, we find a flight number. Then we book that flight. We book a hotel room, and then we email the user and let them know that everything has been booked correctly. And if we run this, sometimes it'll work, but other times there will be a failure, like when the flight service can't reserve a flight. Now, in that case, nothing really bad has happened, but maybe something will fail a little bit further down, like we can't reserve a hotel room. Well, now we're in a state where the flight's booked, but the hotel isn't. Clearly, something needs to change. So I'm going to move this into a reactor structure, and then we can start improving it from there. Here's basically the same flow, but as a reactor. We declare that we're going to need an input, the user's email. We have a step for finding the flight number. We have a step for booking the hotel. Booking the flight requires the result of finding the flight number, which we'll assign to a variable called flight number, and then we can pass that into our flight service. To email the user, we need the user's email address. We need to have the result of the hotel confirmation and the flight confirmation. Then we can construct this email and send it to the email service. And in the end, we're going to wait for the email before returning with the hotel confirmation number, the flight confirmation number, and that flight number itself. Now, something really cool about Reactor, because it can get a little hard to trace the plans, is that it exports to Mermaid natively. So Mermaid is a diagram language that allows you to describe flowcharts and sequence diagrams, and in this case, reactors. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, and we can see that we're going to need to find the flight number before we can book a flight. And of course, that flight number is used in the results. Uh, we need the user's email and the hotel reservation, and once we have that along with the flight code, then we can execute the email step and then hit the end. To run the reactor, we just pass the reactor itself along with its inputs to the reactor.run function. I'll run it down here, and well, we still had a failure, and we're still in the same spot we were before with the naive code. Anyway, this is where sagas come in. Instead of steps that just have a run function, we can also define an undo operation. One way of structuring these is with a module that uses reactor.step, and this can have the run, the undo, and a few other callback functions. When we have a step module, we can just say book flight, and there's the module, and then we can still define any of those arguments inside of the do block. The other way to structure this is through inline anonymous functions, like we are with the hotel, where run will book the hotel room, and undo will take that confirmation code and pass it in. There's pros and cons to using the module or using inline functions. 
One of the big ones is that the diagram will actually have the proper name instead of just saying anonymous function. Anyway, at this point, we can roll back the hotel reservation or the flight if anything goes wrong. So I'll go down here and take a look. In the diagram, we can see that book flight uses book flight step. That's a little bit better than anonymous function that we have on booking hotel. And then we run it the exact same way as before. And in this case, the email service timed out. So we canceled our hotel reservation and canceled our flight. I think that's pretty neat. By offloading orchestration complexity to Reactor, we just think about dependencies and steps. It handles the rest. In fact, let's improve this a little bit more. My email service that I hard coded at the top here will time out 50% of the time. It also fails entirely if there's a bad email address like example.net. Reactor has a concept called compensation that can help with this. In addition to the run function, we can add a compensate, which says that in this case, if the error is a timeout, let's retry. But if it's a bad destination, let's just continue with the failure and roll everything back because there's nothing we can do about that. Now, if we hit a timeout, we should see it retry. Let's see if it happens. We had a timeout and it retried and it succeeded. Retries can also be configured with a maximum if that's important in your use case. All you have to do inside of your step is set max retries to some number and now you're cooking. Reactor also has support for data pipelines, conditional steps, middleware, nesting reactors into other reactors, and even dynamic graphs where steps create other steps on the fly. There's a nifty cheat sheet in the doc site along with great examples in a few different problem spaces. But I wanna take this one step further. Reactors can be directly passed into ASH as run functions to power custom actions. And stay with me, there's some AI here. If you watch the ASH AI video, you'll know that any action can be turned into a tool for an AI agent, maybe an AI travel agent. I copied the reactor that we've been working on into a new ASH AI chat project. Here's the trip reactor and all of the services and then the other thing I did was I created a new domain for integrations and then created an action whose run is our trip reactor. Then I exposed book trip as a tool in the domain. And finally, when we're processing our messages, let's make the book trip action available to the agent. By adding these three bits of code, I made it so that this AI agent is able to book a trip for me. So now I'll tell the agent, I'd like to go on a trip. Now, since it doesn't know my email address and it knows that that information is required for the action to run, it asked me for that info. So I'll just say ca at example.com, send that over. And now it should internally choose to run that reactor and book the trip for me. And there we go. We've got our flight code, our hotel code, our flight number, and a confirmation sent to our email. And if I open up a dev mailbox, there's the email sent to ca at example.com. But this isn't a great HTML email. So what I can do is use AI to construct the email because Reactor can also accept resource actions as steps. Over in my actions resource, I registered the Ash AI extension and then created a new action called compose confirmation email that takes in the flight number and the confirmation codes, has a description, a little bit of instructions that go into the prompt, and then passes it all to the prompt function, which comes from Ash AI, where we can say, hey, Anthropic Claude Sonnet 4.0, go and do this thing, write this email for me. Then in the reactor, instead of composing the message inline within the email user step, I created a new step that is just gonna call our new compose confirmation email action. And the result of this will be passed in as our email message, and then we pass it to the email service. 
So let's book another trip. I'd like to go on a trip. I'll give it ca at example.com again. And now it's going to book the trip and then compose an email on its own in HTML and send off that email in the end. So it booked the trip. It also let me know about the email. And if I go check my mailbox, there we go. Valued customer. Here's all of your information. Here's some reminders. By the way, this is automated. It was able to figure out the job all because I asked it to compose a professional confirmation email given this information. Please and thank you. The Ash team has managed to create an entire ecosystem of libraries that are made more powerful when combined. Of course, it's nice that Ash isn't required to start getting value out of Reactor. The next time you're working on an Elixir application, consider if you might benefit from a concurrent, dependency-resolving Saga orchestrator. If so, try Reactor. This has been Code and Stuff. Thanks for watching.